Yesterday we'll grab a night on the pier. <laughs> it all started a bit peat tong, tell you the truth. I set the alarm for quarter past one in the morning. Planned to get down there by three. And I woke up to go to the toilet. And in my blurry eyed state, I looked at my mobile and I was like, oh, five to one. But I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna go back to bed for 20 minutes. So uh, got up, bung the gear in the car, got back, made, had a wash, got changed. Had a coffee, sat down, looked at the phone, put stuff in Google Maps, and uh, I was like, huh? Well, what? Quarter past 11? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> so I thought, oh, sod it, I'm up now, I might as well get out and go. So I was already in, in down there and fishing by one in the morning. But uh, we'll go into that video later on. I'll show where we are. I've just come down, literally straight down the slip, I'm going to go to the right today. So I've literally just parked up. To the right, car's there. I'm going to walk along the beach through Ostend Gap bit and to where all the breakers are around that bend. But, uh, without further ado, well, I'll quickly show you the rig. I've got the 10 foot Shakespeare spin rod, it's 30 to 80 gram. Shakespeare Mac XT, uh, 5000 reel, nice round herpes braids, 40 pound braid. All the way through, and I've got a 25 pound Flora Max leader on there, about 18 inches, tied with an all bright knot. And that's just running down, small barrel swivel, on one of the micro rig links. And I'm going to start with the 30 gram, 32 gram Fox uh, Ultra Realistic Sand Hill. Alright, let's give it a go. It looks flat carbon. I might just see how far I can get out, if not I'll put a wedge on and see if I can get beyond those or around those breakers, it'll be ideal. I ain't gonna touch it because that's a stinger. I think that's a man of war. His long tentacles or long tail. All right, let's give it a whirl. It's a lot calmer today. No wind, or very little, very, very little. It's absolutely baking hot in Norwich. It's 28 when I got in the car. It's like a bloody oven. It's a bit cooler here. 25, 26 when I got here. Got all slapped on the old factor 40 all over. 
I've got some in my bag as well if I need to top up. Oh. Make sure that's not going around that uh, groin there. It's ever so slightly going right to left. Go this way a bit. <coughs> got my little box again. Shakespeare sliver, some Dexter wedges, Fox Rage Xander Pro, a few other bits and pieces, just all in here. Let them quickly change. I've got some of chatter baits today. If I can get the distance with them, they, they work really well. I we'll have a few casts and we'll just make our way to the right and keep going. If I can get near those breakers, it'll be cool. I have bought some some mackerel feathers with me, and I bought a couple of weights, one and three quarter ounce, one and a quarter, and two ounce bombs. I'll get a little bit more distance. This is casting a lot better today. No wind. I wasn't getting this distance the other day, not at all. I've not had time to back this wheel up yet. I've got to do that. I've really got to do it. I'm sure I've got a deeper spool. They do come with two or three spools, the Mac XTs. That? What was that? That's a savage pull. Right in, right in shore. Didn't feel like a stone. You know when it's a stone, it just goes hard, but that was soft pull, that was. But it is bouncing along the bottom, I do know that. Right, one more cast here, we'll go the other side of the breaker. Try a faster tree, we then pause it. I'm going to keep a close eye on the time. As I say, it's low water, half past four. Yeah. That was a stone.
Okay, let's put a nice dexter wedge on with a bit of bling on it. I was talking to a few people yesterday and uh, said a guy had a nice bass off the pier or the right hand side and somebody had one back of Asda. I just get so much more distance. And it doesn't quite hold, trip the bottom as much. Well, they have to work them quite fast, these wedges, to get it flashing. I'm going to be quite quick today because I want to get to the place around low water where I want to be which is around the end there so I might just have one or two casts this way and then work it on the way back because it'll be flooding then okay guys I made a decision I'm going to walk as far as where I want to go so it's low water when I get there and then I'll walk it all the way back here and fish it on the way back. It's where them people are. If you go around the bay, walk with me for a little bit. The stargazers are really nice. It's almost like a uh, cart gap. A lot more breakers. The way this beach has been eroded and pushed back and everything over the years, you can see, it, as I say, it's been massive high tides yes, yesterday and today with the moon phase, but you can see this is all flooded and this will get flooded at high water today. So that's why I want to make my way as far as I can down there and work my way back because these channels flood before this. If you're down there, you can't see what's coming over this embankment here behind you. That's filling up fast. It'll probably go to above or a level with the uh, walkway there. You're gonna be in a bit of trouble if you've got all your gear and everything. Especially if you night fish, you can't see that rushing in behind you. And especially on the ebb, because we're gonna flood in from this direction. And we're getting there. This is where I want to be. Man alone on the beach. You very rarely get people coming this far. But ideally, where those figures are in the distance, that's where I want to be. Then I can work my way back. I have a couple of sneaky casts here. That's breaking quite close in.
I'm being quite strict with myself. And I got bogged down having a cheeky spin here, there and everywhere. I want to make my way to where I want to be. And then we can fish it properly on the way back. One more. Better cast. But what am I doing when I get there? Get a string of feathers and a one and three quarter ounce bomb and give it out a cast. Right, let's move on. Okay guys, we're here. I ain't gonna watch, uh, walk much further. Just gonna have a quick cast here. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get the phone, so I'm pretty sure this must be the start of where I finished off the other day at like Haysburg. Then I'm gonna check the time, but let's have a quick spin. There's a lot of old rope behind on that the end of that pier. Very old rope by the look of it. Obviously it was a little fishing vessel or a uh, fishing port or something. Long, long ago. That looks like some crane type, type of system. I can get you that rip. That's the one. That water's definitely cleared up a bit. It's clearing up quite fast. All right, I'm gonna grab a, bring this in, grab a cold drink, check the time, check where we are on the map. Okay, it's five to four, which is great. So I've got half an hour or so, a bit longer to mess about here. Probably till, I can probably give it actually till about five and then I can start working my way back. But I've just checked the map. That is Haysborough, Appsburg, just in there. So that's where I finished off the other day when I found that nice little beach. So it's basically uh, continuing on and working our way along. And then what I'll probably do is, quite a good idea of mine, the next time I go back to and go north, I'll just keep going north and north and north and, and see what happens. But uh, I'm going to have a couple of spins here in this next, next channel, or in this next bay. It's got a nice surf on here, quite close in. And I might put a few feathers on and just have a play about with uh, lures and that. You know the gulls over there, swooping and diving. just in the next bay. There you go. Okay, I just put on some uh, mackerel feathers. 
the three quarter ounce bomb and to get this cast out. There goes the distance. See, one cast. That bomb's just bouncing along the bottom. The feather's behind. I need to find the other lead. I've just put a lead on that wall and I heard a doink in the sand or in the, on the stones. And can I find it? So that's ever so slightly heavier lead. It's just a square bomb. It was on here, I heard it bloody hit the stones. Uh, chances of finding it, one in a million, I think. Yay, I found it. Had to be black, didn't it? Yeah. I'll get this on. I looked under my bag, I knew I would have put my bag down, it knocked it off. I looked straight down that hole there, <laughs> and that's where it was sat. not lose anything. I might try it with the Dexter wedge and see if I can get any distance, but that feels a lot better with that weight. Okay guys, it's quarter to five. I've just put on the feathers and the one and three, one and a quarter ounce lead. It absolutely flies out. So I'm gonna start making my way back. Draw my heed. Just tighten it up a bit. But I'm getting right out near the, uh, where the waves are breaking, which is nice. I'm not forcing it. But right out where the waves are, it's quite nice and flat and sandy. Then you get closer on the inside here, it starts to turn into a slightly deeper pebbly bit. So it's quite shallow out there where the waves are breaking. It's on a sandbar. So I suspect there are many bass knocking about be on that sandbar. Shame it's not 10, 15 yards closer. If that water was a lot warmer, 
come July, August, I'll be wading out at low water. Then we'll head our way back. I did yomp it on the way here. Fair pace. So I suspect it will take about an hour and a half to get back. I don't think we're going to get quite as far, but it might be a bit more attraction. Right, let's give it a whirl. Definitely doesn't feel as heavy. No, nah. nowhere near. You get further with the wedge on its own. Just you put feathers on it, really cuts the distance down a lot. Maybe on a day when the breakers are a lot closer in, we're quite far out again today. We're back on the bomb, I think. You never know when it starts to flood a bit. One more. Just to dispel the myth. That's a better cast. That's a better cast though. I don't mind that. Let's have a switch and play about and switch between the two. A wedge on its own. Wedge and feathers, low, uh, weight and feathers. But those feathers are really flashing it. Look at that. Flashing in the water. Alright, let's make a little move. Okay, I've just had a play around for the rig and I've just shortened it up a little bit. And also flicked it around because the shorter side was at the bottom and the longer bit was at the top so basically I make them all up myself this is a 70 pound rig body Kiyoki rig micro swivel 150 pound swivel with a quick link I've got 25 pound floor max I've only put three because I want to keep it quite short and they're just basically um, 1-0 hooks that's sort of Aberdeen or Mustad Vikings with silver paper bound on, whipped on. This was like thick sort of uh, wrapping paper. And I'll just do like a knotless knot over them. And then it's super glued. And I just whipped it on. I've got there's some feathers there. They sit like that. Put a bit of whipping on over the top. Quick and easy. There's that birthday paper, that thick holographic birthday paper you get. That's better, I've shortened it up a lot. Oh, and well old. And just flicking the rig round, the feathers are going to be higher in the water and the weight lower. Let's make our way back to that next sandbar up there where the waves are breaking. But we're on the flood now. ever so slightly starting to flood. I also like to have a cast across the bay as well. I'll have one more at a diagonal angle, just in case there's anything coming in close. Yeah, definitely on the flood.
We have two or three casts in each spot and then we'll move on. I am so peed off that I've lost my bloody Pachenko. Took it out once at Overstrand and then it, so I can't find them. Can't find them. That's 20 quid down the drain. <laughs> All right, let's make a move. Side of the Bad call, dude. That's a lost rigman. You stupid idiot. I had a re rig because I stupidly uh, let my braid go with the wind take it around the breaker. So it's only a cheap pair of feathers anyway. So. But what I've done is I thought I'll give this a try. I bought this for piking, but it really does look good in the water, and I've had a few casts of it. A diving shad, a wobble bait, look. Well, it looks a bit like a red mullet or something like that. I don't know if you can see that. I'd seen as there's a red mullet caught yesterday at North Norfolk, and it does cast well. Cast bloody well. I'm just giving it a slow, slow retrieve and then stop it and letting it settle, sink again. The way that <laughs> I like the way that looks. Whether it'll catch a bass, we'll see. But it really does um, wobble in the water really well. Alright, let's make a move. I want to get back for the time for the England game, but um, well probably won't be missing much. <laughs> Let's just hope they go through. Just not, just hope they're not as, uh, not as good as Italy last night. Or as poor as Italy, should I say. 
Very, very lucky last minute goal. Last second goal, wasn't it? Oh, you felt gutted for Croatia. Right. Better just double check over. Got my brain again and not left anything lying around. I can see my feathers there. I don't know how they've ended up on top of the, uh, shining away on top of the break wall there. I almost got it back. One of the feathers got caught on one of the posts. I flicked it up, nearly got it back, but that's it. Oh, and I ain't gonna uh, walk out along one of them to get it, that's for sure. <laughs> for a couple of pence rig, not a chance. Not if you fall on one of them bloody spikes anyway. I just love the way this uh, glides in the water. I think it's going to be a sink and draw. We've got a jerk bait, quick couple of jerks. And part a bit of action into it. See how that's snaking in the water there, look. Forty-two gram uh, Shakespeare slither. Forty-two gram, an absolute cast like a bullet. We're not even putting that much teddy into it, and it's. Spoiling me out pretty much. Absolutely flies out. I just got snagged on that last bay. I don't know what was down there, but it's locked solid. Lost the wedge. Uh, seems to be one of them days. Okay guys, it's absolutely flat calm. It's like a mill pond out there. So I'm gonna put on the uh, Fox Xander Pro. 20 gram head on there, interchangeable. There's not a breath of wind. The breeze that was earlier on is gone. So. Let's see how we got on with this. No distance on it. I need to get some bigger thirty two gram, whatever you call them. Chigarero or whatever they are called. <laughs> the uh, interchangeable ball heads. I'm just gonna work that slowly across the bottom. Look at this boys, I ain't blanked. 
I've got a nice set of sabikis and a weight. Bring it on. Mind you, that line's really uh, thin. I'm not surprised it uh, snapped. But I'm having them. Nice set of sabikis. I do, it shouldn't have, well, that's probably the reason why it's probably one of these crappy little uh, American snap link swivels. Look at that, they just bend straight out. The pants, I don't know why anyone uses them. It's like tin, tin foil. You know, useless. I wouldn't put, put them on the rig. And three ounces, that's probably why. You don't need three ounce lead. Two's the most. One and a quarter to two, that's all you need. I'll give them a go in a minute, actually. That needs to go at the top. That's for the bottom. Yeah, that's the top. And go on the quick link. These mini rig clips are good, but I prefer the one up, the small. There's a little bit fiddly getting the uh, lures on and off, but they're not too bad. They're strong though, still 150 pound. It might be small, but strong. Oh. Give that well. too far. Do. I don't want to put that leader knot inside the eye, keeping it outside. You've got to just change your casting style. Almost like a beach, beach caster style. Just let the lead or the lure weight swing behind you till you feel it. It is as far as we were getting before. What? Right. Where is that there? Orca? 
That's huge. That ain't no seal. Dolphin, orca. His head popped up, it's breaching like an orca. Definitely a seal, not that size. Look, unless it's a bloody great black seal. It's huge, whatever it is. Right, let's move along. When you cast it, it's because there's a lot longer drop. You have to release the law a lot higher. To cast it shallow, it's not getting the distance. Right, let's move along. You can see the slipway, we're nearly back home, or back to where we started. Come on, let's have one. Let's have one before we go. Okay guys, I'm back at the ramp. Just literally to my left there. I'm gonna have one or two cheeky little last casts and uh, call it a day, I think. But um, yeah, no fish. That's why it's called a quest for bass. <laughs> and I think it will last a while, but I'm determined we'll get one soon. Now this water's clearing up and the weather's getting warmer. But you just gotta be in it to win it. You have gotta keep trying, keep plugging away, as they say. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Tight lines, all the best, and I'll see you in another one.